Hello everyone. In this episode, I wanted to show you an interesting way, a kind of a quick hack to make mirrored copies of objects. This is actually a question that I got on a, a video from one of my viewers, Lamont Collins. He was wondering, he was uh, watching the video about duplicating objects and he was saying, hey, is there a way to make mirrored copies? And I thought for a moment, I thought, hey, there is a hack that I can think of and I tried it out and I thought maybe I will share this tip with you. Let's have a look inside Das Studio and grab a building from Stonemason's Urban Sprawl 3. So that comes with a lot of buildings there under the props section. And let's just pick one that has a non-symmetric look like this one here, US Building 09. Uh, there we go. That is, that's large, of course. There we go, that's the building. And it's, it's got this distinctive look, so it's not a symmetric object. It has the fire escape on the left and it's got this thing sticking out here on the right. So the thing is, it's fairly easy to make a mirrored copy by futzing with the scale and the rotation. So here's what I would do, and this is this works quite well. So you head over to the scale and you can either change the overall scale of your object. That's not what we want. We want to adjust the scale of the Y axis. So that's this one here. That technically makes the building, you know, flatter or taller. It's also not exactly what we want. But the cool thing is we can go into negative values. And when we do that, so zero means the thing is completely flat. But if we go even further down, the building kind of comes out at the bottom. And if we set this to minus 100 on the scale value, we technically have a building that is, well, kind of upside down, but it's also inverted, which is kind of cool. So if we now go ahead and head over to the rotation value and then tweak the Z rotation, that's the blue axis, so that we kind of bring it back like so and we type in 180, then the building is exactly the other way around. And that is, you know, a really fancy easy trick if you wanted to have a little bit of variation in your scene. If it's about buildings and you want them or you need them to look different and you don't want to go into a modeling application, this is how you can do that. I'll show you how to do this again. There are of course flaws as with many hacks that you apply. You have to apply other hacks to make it look good. Uh, maybe I'll go and do this all again bring in the same building and in fact make a duplicate of it. So there's there's two ways that you there's 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 things that you've got to watch out for here. But the in in principle you can make a duplicate of it just like I showed you in the other video that's under edit duplicate there's du duplicate nodes or node hierarchies. We don't have any hierarchy so node will be fine. And I'll start with this. I'll show you how to do an instance in a moment and I'll show you what that why that is interesting and what to watch out for. I'll go and move the copy of the building next to it so we can see these two mirrored objects, well, these two objects side by side, one being a mirror copy of the other. I'll leave the original in place and I'll show you how to do this step by step. So mirror, so the copy is selected. We'll head over to the parameters tab and we head over to the scale section and under Y scale, we type in minus 100 and that'll turn the building kind of inside out and upside down. And that's, therein lies already the problem, this inside out thing, this inversion, that's kind of, you know, that's the, the, the weird thing. Under rotation, we'll head over to the rotation tab on the parameters tab. Under Z rotate, we're going to type in 180. And as soon as we do that, we go and see the mirrored copy of the thing, which is awesome. Look at that, two buildings. Isn't that exciting? That is just so cool. Oh, come on. Uh, come on. Yes, there we go. And they are definitely mirrored, which is cool. Now, if you look closely, there are issues with this because the building has signs and that is where things get a little bit problematic sometimes when, when you have writing on a building, like in this case, we have a butcher's shop. And of course that sign, it being inverted and all is now also mirrored. That's kind of creepy, but uh, there is also a way to change that. So here there's the, the choice cut fresh daily meat. That's really what it says. And then here it only says, uh, you know, uh, something inverted. I can also do that in filament, by the way. I don't know why I didn't do that to begin with. There we go. It's a little bit easier to see now. Choice cut fresh daily meat. So what are we going to do about that? Luckily, so this is a stonemason set and stonemason, of course, knows what he's doing. And he's referenced this sign twice. We have that up here and we have that down here. So I'll bring my scene back 
and I'll switch over to my surface selection tool here, this one. I've got that here already, and that means when you hover over things in your scene, whatever is a surface that has parameters, we can, it flashes up yellow. If you don't see that icon here, it's also under tools, surface selection, that you can, you can grab that from here as well. And we can find whichever thing it is that we want to change. So in our case, it's this sign here, the choice meat butcher shop. It's referenced twice, so it doesn't matter which one I select. Under surfaces, here it is open. It says signs two, and in here we have a geometry section. If you go into that, you can either whittle this down or just leave this on, on geometry. And then we see, you know, the, the, all the settings at the top here. The two that we are interested in is horizontal tiles and horizontal offset. This is going to help us invert that sign. So I'm going to go and zoom in on this so we can see it a little bit better, maybe even like so. So first of all, horizontal tiles, we're going to use a similar trick that we used with the scaling here. So I'm going to go and make that smaller. And that means if I, as I make the value smaller, the sign gets kind of stretched out. And eventually I get to the value of zero. And then I go and turn it the other way around and turn it into minus one. And you can see that the sign is now correct, but it seems to be whizzing by the position that it needs to hit to be on that sign. So I'll type in minus one. So it's inverted now, inverted on that. And so this is where the horizontal offset comes in. This is essentially, so all the, if we look at the, if we look at the texture map, this is what it looks like. So many signs are on the same texture and that's, that's kind of cool. That saves the, that saves space by choosing to tile it in the opposite direction. We basically invert it, but now we need to find the correct position. So you see that the choice meet sign, what we're now seeing on the sign is literally to the left of the sign. So we just need to shift the position of the texture so that it hits this thing. That's also again on the geometry tab and that's under horizontal offset. If we go and move that, we can actually just find the right place for choice cut fresh daily meats. Isn't that exciting? There we go. So now you have at least one sign uh, correct in the way where it, uh, on to how it should be how it should be presented. Now we have two buildings that both read choice cut meets. That is cool. So it's a mirrored copy, but it's now got the correct sign here. Now there are issues with this. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. This isn't a perfect way to do this. And especially in filament, you can see that the bump map is also inverted because technically we're looking at an inside out version of the building. So if you look, you see this in IRA as well, it'll kind of work, but the grout on the tiles comes out. It should really go in. And if you look at the uninverted version of the building, that's actually uh, correct. The grout does go in, but on our inverted version, on our duplicate alternate reality type version of the building, the grout actually comes out. So you technically have to futz with all these maps to make that, you know, look handsome and perfect. I'll show you something else. There's, if you use a copy of this, it'll look okay. It'll look okay in filament. It'll look okay in iRay as well. But if you use an instance of the building, things are a little bit different. And I just thought I wanted to bring this to your attention just in case you get excited and say, hey, great, I'm going to build my next project on the one tip Jay gave me as a throwaway remark. And of course, it, it's, it's not going to work just as well as that. Let me go destroy the mirror copy of our building and go and select the original again. And now I'll go and create an instance of it. So that's under create note instance. There's two of them here, but the first one will do fine. And that'll now create not a duplicate, but an instance of our building. And that is also in the same place. So I'm going to go and you can see it has a different icon here. And that means it still references all the textures and all the geometry in the same memory space as the original. It just creates kind of a, a ghost shadow copy of it and it'll go and and cost you less memory. So in filament and in iRay, this is going to look okay. I mean, at the moment it will be. If we go over to our parameter section again, head over to scale and then set the Y scale to minus 100. And that's also still okay. Under rotation, we're going to set the Z rotation to 180 to make it a mirror copy. You can see it looks a little different. It looks a little shadier than the original. And that has to do with the fact that the 
normals are now flipped as well. So we're basically flipping the normals. There's a script by M Casual that I think you can get. You can also go and take this into Blender and flip the normals that way. That is also possible. But if you look at this in the texture shaded view, you'll see a completely black version. And it's almost like the, the normals are the, the surface that will reflect light, but the other side doesn't necessarily do that. And in, uh, in Dash Studio, in the texture shader view, it doesn't appear to do that. So this is always a, a good way to spot where are the normals. If it's something it appears to be completely black, it's because the normals are flipped. As I said, it doesn't matter if you're in iRay. iRay deals with this in a different way. It'll just show you the show you the surfaces through the normals or through the other side so you can see the textures. It's just something to be aware of. It's not a perfect way to get a mirrored copy of a building, but it is something that will get you started, especially if it's for background objects and a bit of variety, you can do it. Kind of works with instances, duplicates, you can change the the, um, the signs. Oh yeah, that's a good point to remember. If you were to change the surfaces now, that doesn't work with an instance. You have to have a duplicate to do that because it will reference the original maps and the position of the original maps. So you can't make that change on the instance only on a duplicate. I hope Lamont that was helpful. I hope you got a lot out of it. That is how you can use a cheap and crazy way to make quick duplicates, mirror duplicates of your objects in the scene. Works with characters as well, but you know, careful with the normals. Just thought I'd mention it. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I will see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>